Hey guys, welcome. Yeah, so happy 2020. And if you haven't watched example zero on Solids of Revolution, then you should first watch that before watching this because, well, there in example zero, we big picture look at the disk method, the washer method, and the method of cylindrical shells. So we turn all three of them inside out and upside down and really make sure that we understand them. Um, and therefore, if you watch example zero prior to watching this video, it will uh, facilitate easier understanding of the discussion to be had in the rest of this video, yeah? Okay, cool. Now, this video is entirely dedicated to the disk method and specifically uh, three specific examples that are very different from one another. So it's worth watching all the way through. Uh, I will to start offer you a slightly different perspective on the disk method that was not offered uh, in example zero, and that is this. Well, recall that like when we did um, area approximations using Riemann sums, what we did is like we took, say, uh, the area bounded by x equals a, x equals b, the x-axis, and this a function f of x, so this area here. And what we did is we used a bunch of rectangles similar to this rectangle, and we used the sum of the areas of the rectangle to approximate the area of the region. Uh, so like, you know, we like uh, built uh, rectangles like this one to the right and left of this rectangle where the height of the rectangles was given by the function's value on uh, the left end of every interval uh, that defines the rectangle's width, right? So like the rectangle uh, here, its height is given by the function's value at this x. And so uh, we did uh, the sum of the areas of the rectangles put together as a good approximation of the area of the rectangle. Now, here, we're not doing area, we're doing volume, because what we're doing is we're taking uh, this region here, which has area, and we're spinning it about the x-axis. Now, after 180 degree spin, this region here would turn into this region here, and actually, we're going to call this spin a revolution, and hence, solids of revolution, right? Okay, cool. Now, um, if we take just this rectangle in this region and we spin just this rectangle about the x-axis, then what we'd get is a disk. A disk that would look like this, but not quite like this because the disk would sit vertical like this, right? Okay, cool. But it doesn't matter. We can flip the disk over and say it's this disk when uh, this rectangle spins about uh, the x-axis. Now, remember, we'd have similar rectangles to this one to the right and left of it covering this entire region, this entire uh, region we're spinning about the x-axis. So as all of the other rectangles spin about the x-axis, they too will form disks. And so then the sum of the volumes of the disks, would it be a good way to approximate the volume of uh, the solid that is formed when this region revolves about the x-axis? And the solid that it formed when this region spins about the x-axis is somewhat like a vase, but not all the way a vase, right? Okay, and I'm saying we can use the sum of the volumes of the disks that each spun about the x-axis all put together as a good approximation of the volume of the solid that is almost a vase but not quite a vase yeah okay so then all we have to do is figure out the volume of one of the discs say the disc that is formed when this rectangle spins about the x-axis that's this fella here well it's radius notice is uh, this height of this rectangle and so that's f of x so the radius is f of x or r um, or <laughs> well I meant f of x or y. <laughs> Sorry, that punchline was really bad. I said f of x or r, and you're going like, uh, yeah, the radius is abbreviated as r. I meant f of x or y, because frequently we see y as being f of x, and yeah, you get it, you get it, you get it. Okay, okay, but yeah, the volume of one of these disks is pi r squared times h, because really a disk is like a shrunk cylinder. It's a very short cylinder, and so it's got a height, and so it's pi r squared h is its volume. And so in this case, it'd be like pi f of x or y squared times dx. Because, well, remember, dx is an infinitesimally small difference in x. Uh, so technically, you know, it's invisible, but like we can like make it visible. But yeah, dx is the uh, width of the rectangle. And so then the height of the disk, right? When this rectangle spins about the um, x-axis to form this disk. And so then one of the disks, as I just said, has volume pi r squared dx or pi y squared dx or pi f of x squared dx. So pi r squared dx. And we just need to add up uh, the volumes of these disks. 
and add up is done by the integral sign and obviously we go from a to b because well uh, we're adding in the long x and so our region along x is concerned from a to b uh, so that's everything and uh, hopefully a nice uh, second perspective on the disk method uh, different from what you saw in example zero uh, okay but uh, the first specific example now is the funnel that we looked at in example zero and so it's the region bounded by y equals x squared y equals zero and x equals two as it spins about the x-axis and what happens is we get a funnel when that region um and uh, the first quadrant spins about the x-axis now the region is in the first quadrant and drawing quadratics is quite hard on this tool so let's just move the axis that's cheaper um uh, but yeah our region is uh this region right here just in the first quadrant but i mirrored it here because well we want to spin it about the x-axis or y equals zero and so when it spins about the x-axis this region here is going to turn into this region but really uh the solid it sweeps out is a funnel as i said and the funnel is going to look like this right okay uh, but we have everything because we already said everything and so then now we just go from zero to uh, two so that region along the x concerns zero to two right and then uh, r is uh, the height of the function or y or f of x that's x squared and since we have a dx we need r in terms of x and so we're gonna write instead of r equals y we're gonna write r equals x squared because uh, y is equal to x squared and so then we have x squared squared is r squared and then the dx x squared squared is x to the fourth and so i don't cheat you with the algebra but this is simple enough the volume of this funnel is 32 pi over 5 yeah cool on our next example we're gonna uh, spin our region about the y-axis so that's different and our region this time is uh this here it's the region bounded by ah i tried to shade just our region and shaded the whole board but like it's the region in here right it's bounded by y equals x squared uh x equals zero or the y-axis and y equals two so it's this region and of course after it spins about the y-axis that is after it revolves about the y-axis 180 degrees this region turn into this region right okay cool uh, my shading doesn't quite reflect uh that right but uh the, this region spun is exactly that but it will in the next and final example i do better that is i uh, as i shade here mirror and so yeah um okay 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 but that was like kind of like an interesting side note uh that that yeah it doesn't matter <laughs> um okay and uh, our discs this time are going to sit exactly like this disc is sitting right remember the discs when uh this rectangle spun about the x-axis uh, they were sitting like this but this time uh, they're like this and so then the height of our disk this time is not dx it's dy uh, the height of our disk is an infinitesimally small change along the y right uh, in fact i haven't drawn disks i've drawn circles here and so yeah like and that's probably more appropriate for a uh, dy or a dx because like they're infinitesimally small so yeah um this flattens into a circle is uh, more appropriate in calling uh, this dx a dy now because as i said the disc or the circles are horizontal and also r is no longer y r is x because r goes from here to here and that's x whether we're talking about this disc or this disc or any other disc in between or somewhere else um r at all places is x right okay it's from here to here that's the x coordinate of this point it's from here to here that's the x coordinate of this point yeah okay cool so that's what's different about revolving about a vertical line right r is going to be horizontally measured instead of vertically measured uh and so it's going to involve x instead of involving y um but yeah um i should point out something that should be obvious every time you're revolving about a horizontal line even if it's not the x-axis uh you need to have a dx in this part and anytime you're revolving about a vertical line even if it's not the y-axis this here needs to be a dy because you're adding the disks along the y anytime you're revolving about the y-axis or a vertical line and you're adding them along x when it's revolved about a horizontal axis even if it's not the x-axis okay i think we have all the pieces together here because uh, i just said that r here is x 
um, otherwise this here is a dy and clearly a and b this time concern um, our region along the y so that's from here to here and that's from zero to two in this case so we plug all that in and uh, note that uh, since r is equal to x we have x squared in this part and so because we've got a dy here we need to figure out how to turn this x squared into something about a y we need it in terms of y because otherwise we can't finish this integral uh, how convenient uh, our radius which is x is stopped by this curve which is defined by y equals x squared so x squared is y uh, in this specific example right so cool we just replace this x squared with a y and uh, we finish off the integral sometimes uh, figuring out what x is might be required and obviously if that was required here we'd note that from y equals x squared x is root y right okay cool um but yeah here uh we can simply replace x squared with y because that's what uh the relationship on this curve says and that's what determines our r and yeah um the integral is pretty straightforward uh so the volume of this paraboloid is 2 pi and that's all she wrote here okay our third and final example is very interesting because well we're taking the same region as the second uh example the middle example but we're spinning it about a different vertical line than the y-axis. We're spinning it about the vertical line x equals 2. So this is a very important example uh, that uh, you should learn from for future examples on the washer method and the method of cylindrical shells. Because in future examples, we will be spinning things uh, about horizontal and vertical lines that are not the x and y axes. Yeah? Okay, cool, cool, cool. Now, I've learned from the middle example. And here in the shading, I use the mirror. And the mirror of course is the line that we're spinning about and so that is x equals negative 2 and so you could see that as this region here uh, revolves about this line after 180 degree revolution it will turn into this including the shading mistake that you saw here being reflected ah, ah, ah you like that you like that okay that's what I thought okay now <laughs> our solid is actually going to look like this and our solid is a bowl and I intentionally drew uh, this inner circle but uh, this inner circle shouldn't mislead you into thinking that our solid is hollow in a cylindrical way in the middle. Our solid is not hollow. It's solid, like solid snake, like it's entirely covered, right? Like it's entirely full. I drew this inner circle so that I could help you understand what R has to be for our entire solid here. Notice that uh, R for our solid here is going to go from here all the way to here, whether we uh, draw out the R that involves this disk here or uh, whether it's for another disk here R is going to go from the uh, axis that we revolve about all the way to a border and a horizontal border since our axis here is vertical right okay so R is this notice that all places R from here to here uh, is 2 right and then from here to here is X um, yeah okay so then R for our solid here is going to be 2 plus X at all places 2 plus X right 2 plus X here where X is 0 but like right at all places 2 plus X very 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 important that you understand this and this is really the only thing different between this example and the middle example um, are being sophisticated otherwise our discs are still just like the middle example they're um, being added vertically and so this is going to be a dy and our uh, a and b are going to concern our region along the y as you'll see i actually made a mistake and for our a and b in this example i used uh, our region along the x which should go from zero to root two along the x but we're going along the y so it should go from zero to two so uh, in the writing i'm going to display you should fix 0 to root 2 to say 0 to 2 because again we're adding a long y but otherwise this dx is a dy and r as I just said abusively is 2 plus x and everything else is there so we write it out and this is what we've got and uh, yeah unlike the middle example notice that this time as r is 2 plus x we need to figure out what x here is in terms of y so uh, we need to go to this relationship and note that since y is equal to x squared x is root y and so this x needs to be replaced with root y so that you can finish this integral and as i already pointed out this root 2 should say 2 so should this so, so should that and we should be done um here 
Yeah, okay, cool. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, more examples to come and keep watching. Happy New Year again if I said it and if I didn't say it. Well, Happy New Year again. Bye.